Our, our next speaker is, uh, so tomorrow I believe we're gonna have a session on, on AI and how Checkpoint uses artificial intelligence to do what it does. And I think it's important that we realize that artificial intelligence isn't magic, right? It's still just ultimately code running, and it's and you know we, we you know if you if you listen to marketing with about about artificial intelligence, it solves all the world's problems. And the reality is is that it solves very specific problems very well, and it needs to be it, it needs to be trained kind of like a two year old, uh, you know, or or your dog or whatever that they need they, you know that they're. There is some intelligence there, but it's not as much as you think, and it's going to take some time. And, and you know, for us, I think that the, the the importance is artificial intelligence is just a, it's it's one more tool that we can use to uh, to provide uh, you, know, pre you know prevention you know against the fifth generation of cybersecurity attacks. Um, it can be used for other things as well, and so. Um, um, so uh, QoS Technologies, one of our partners, runs a uh, run, you know, runs a runs a, runs a sock, right? And they've got to look through all this data and figure out, you know, how to how to protect their customers. Um, so um, so there's so uh, Ramon's going to come up and talk to us about uh, about how they're using artificial intelligence to uh, to protect their customers. And 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 yes, some of that does involve check checkpoint, which is which is why we're up here on the uh, on the checkmates check. So so Ramon, come on up. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, uh, after a great introduction on artificial intelligence, and as Damon very rightly said, you know, artificial intelligence is one more tool. It's not a panacea that will solve all the security problems. So I'm sure in next uh, about 25, 30 minutes, I'm going to demystify few jargons, few ways, and the way really artificial intelligence is helping us doing the job of security operations center and enhancing the security operations center experience for most of our customers. But before we have said, first of all, I thank all of you. You know, this is the last session of a long day of listening to presentations, very, very new, interesting uh, concepts, and the new product launches which Checkpoint has done. Uh, now, coming to, uh, before I start my presentation on managed incident response and artificial intelligence, uh, how many of you have already implemented security operations center, either in your organizations or for your customers? Maybe if a quick. Great, quite a few. And how many of you have already embraced the path of uh, choosing artificial intelligence or some form of machine learning to, to, embrace, to be embraced for your security operations? Good, excellent. So we are gonna talk about the few use cases uh, that we've built for our checkpoint uh, customers. Myself, Ramandeep Singh, and I represent a company called QS Technology. We are a four-star partner for India, and we have recently moved are one of the branches to United States. And we've been working with Checkpoint for the last seven years, and the highest number of customer base belongs to Checkpoint uh, for us. Uh, and for that reason, we have put in, in the slide, the talk is how to enrich the Checkpoint customer's experience of SOC. You know, when we are working with them is what is I'm going to talk about. So we created a platform about two years ago. We started working on that. It's quite matured now. It has a lot of customer use cases. We have deployed customers as well to the enterprises, to small enterprises. And when we talk about uh, our motivation of started working for Checkpoint platform and starting to build and enhance the security experiences primarily because of the, this Checkpoint having announced two and a half years ago, the support for Stix and Taxi. How many of you have heard about Stix and Taxi? Great. So sticks and taxi is like a HTML, HTTP protocol and a language relationship where you have a browser on one side and a server on the other side. Here with sticks and taxi we are talking about exchanging and making the intelligence learned from one security control to be used and reused in the other security controls. So that's the, that's the power, you know, because Checkpoint has always for the last 20 years I've been associated with, has been promoting something called as OPSEC Alliance, making multiple uh, security vendors, security solutions work together. So this was all the motivation when we started working on this entire solution. 
Uh, I'm going to break this uh, uh, remaining 20, 25 minutes of my presentation into four sections, which is basically the introduction, which is making some jargons, you know, a lot of times we hear machine learning, deep learning, and, and so on and so forth. I'm going to talk about a bit on that. Then the business use cases that are relevant to cybersecurity as a whole, not specific to the platform I'm going to talk about. And then in the last about five minutes, I'm going to talk about what exactly is managed incident response platform and how AI is being utilized there. Uh, so let's talk about the evolution of uh, artificial intelligence. We all have been seeing the data sets for many, many years. You know, it's been uh, ages, you know, whether it's a population data or uh, economic uh, data and so on and so forth. The, the, there have been many statistical modeling techniques like mean, median, standard deviation, mean square roots, and so many other things like that which we have been learning in mathematics or, or statistical analysis. Data mining is one such art where we find out the insights from the data. But if we see what has happened in last five, seven years with us as an IT industry, there's a humongous amount of data getting generated. And we are talking about the mega trends, you know, mega alerts, mega attacks coming and, and sitting on the top of us uh, in the time to come. So data mining has become very complex that it's not humanly possible to draw the interpretations out of the, 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 the data sets which we have. Therefore, the, the, the IT industry or the, the, the scholars of the IT industry who are doing research have started to use the machine learning, the machines to help the humans to find out those hidden insights and bring the value out of that. And that's exactly what gave the birth to the new terms like data science and so on and so forth. Moving on, the machine learning works on very limited uh, understanding, uh, like there has to be uh, most of the time uh, quantitative data, which means numericals in numbers, and also there has to be some kind of a relational index between one data entry and another data entry. Let's say, for example, uh, age, the, the salaries, the population structure, and so on and so forth. So all those are called as the feature space or the labels. So when we know what are the labels on which I have to make a decision, that is where the machine learning is being used. But if we see the kind of data diversity which we are handling with, no matter whether it is cybersecurity or any other field today, it's very difficult to predict today or understand that which of those attributes are important for me to take a decision as, as a machine. Therefore, we have evolved machine learning. So artificial intelligence is nothing but an evolved machine learning. So it's a subset of machine learning. And the business use cases which are more like advanced analytics, which have complex data structures, huge data and so on and so forth, and also the predictive and cognitive analytics. One important thing I like to also make for a layman kind of a understanding between machine learning and, and, and artificial intelligence, in the machine learning, we make the machines to learn uh, by teaching them. But in deep learning, machines are fed with the data and they learn from the data sets itself. Cybersecurity talks about data mining because you need to cleanse a lot of data, there's a lot of uh, noise in the data, you need to pick up all those signals and then you have to establish the relationships between signals. So cybersecurity has the use cases which are relevant to all the three stuff which we talk about. So a demystifying bit, you know, we have all been talking about cybersecurity since uh, the Rumsfeld statement, you know, which he made about seven, eight years ago, that there are known knowns, there are unknown knowns, and there are unknown unknowns. So most of our security, cybersecurity specialists are talking about those things. So if we are dealing with the known knowns, you know, wherein it's like, okay, after five failures of the login authentication, if there is a successful login authentication, there has to be a, 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 a possibility of a, 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 a user compromise or a privilege escalation. Now, this is a very typical use case, and in the security operations center, we have been building it by the regular expressions. Now, the debate starts when I used to configure, you know, the similar rule 20 years ago, my customer will ask me how you decide whether it is five failures followed by a success or a three failures followed by a success. That's where we started giving this job to the machine to decide whether it is three, five, or so on and so forth in the current situation when we are deploying machine learning. But still, we are telling and informing the machines that which are those important attributes to look for. That is failure of login and the pass of the login. So this is how the machine is being fed. So you have to give, you find out the data sets, which have all that kind of variance which you want to teach to the machines and machines learn from them. In a non-security example, 
we can see all the election results which we see you know predictive analytics on elections where the attributes are very simple it's it's that's how we decide similarly somebody wants to take a decision whether the stock exchange will or a bitcoin will go up or down you know next month this is how the machine learning is going to be used where the variables where the feature space is known to the humans but when we are talking about handling the unknown unknowns you know where we i don't i, I can't predict it's like siri you know it's like working on predictive english you know or or you are using your own language and the, the um, apple is trying to figure out what you are going to populate the next word is you know even if you it it tries to read your mind also now you know that's what it's like 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 deep learning so deep learning is is nothing but making the machine learn learn like human beings the way the child is born he starts recognizing this is how my parents look like this is how the citizens from my country look like i am sure if i travel to china or to singapore or to anywhere else in the asian countries it's difficult for me to figure out whether the person i'm talking to belongs to singapore or to thailand or to indonesia or so on and so forth because it's very difficult for me to find out which are those characteristics to distinguish but the people who belong to this part of the world they are able to distinguish similar way if i go back to india it's very easy for us to identify which out of those 35 states this individual most likely belong to but that doesn't mean that my decision is always going to be right this is how the machine learns from the data what it has seen this is what exactly is deep learning and ha you have to when you are talking about cyber security for for uh, identifying those uh, anomalies which are sitting or the indicators of attack Uh, and indicators of pivots which are really not the compromise as of now you know they are possibly can have a potential to become the 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 attack vectors or the real attacks tomorrow is what exactly is handling the unknown unknowns now if we go back to an a third form of learning which the machines can be taught now there is the pattern which has been seen that how a wanna cry propagates there is a pattern which we have seen that how 911 attack happens in the physical security now if we see a similar pattern happening anywhere in the world there is a standard operating procedure which has been set up at every country or every airport every air force has been taught about but before if we go back before 911 era we do not know how how to detect that similar way if we understand okay i'll just run through this is like okay similar way if we if we try to figure out that what is a cyber kill chain and if we try to map it with the last 2 or 3 years of real sample data we'll feel that we'll figure out that uh, sql injection is the number one uh, 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 cyber kill chain vector that is trying to steal or or expose the data sets which belong to the organization now this is a little mathematical slide this is called as markov curves you know in in the markov curves what you have is different states which a machine can take or which a attack will take when attack will start there is no sql injection in the world which can be just dropped like that you know it's not it's not a parachute it evolves it starts from a typical ip scan it will evolve with a or it will start with a phishing mail it will get into the next stage where it will understand which are the possible exploits that can be centered or entered into this infrastructure and so on and so forth so px px/y these are all mathematical probabilities of the previous states now as an attacker as a hacker or a ethical hacker i know that these are the top 5 use cases where the maximum breaches have happened in last 3 years now you can very easily refer to verizon data breach investigation reports for last 3 years and you will figure out that what are the top 15 attacks and you will find that these are the top 5 commonly existing in all the last 3 years that's an amazing understanding which can be fed to the machine in the form of these kind of mock of curves and who defines these probabilities are those seasoned hackers or ethical hackers who have been going after Uh, you know penetration testing for many years and so on and so forth so we use all this to figure out that if we put this code in to the machine it can enhance the response time in figuring out that what stage of attack somebody is in the typical security operation centers and 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 this is called as reinforced learning so this is a third form or is a term i am introducing if you are not aware about it's called as reinforced learning it's like cockpit you know the autopilot where the deterministic environment is very much understandable on the cockpit therefore uh, you know the likelihood of failure of the flight or crash of the flights is in 0.000001 because we can mathematically plot the environmental conditions the air speed the height the turbulence and so many things which are being fed to the machine and that machine relationships are called as the markov curves which have been put into the system so we have used all this while we have worked out on our solution 
But what is more important is to understand that how AI, or what is the reason for, for using AI into uh, the cybersecurity. As a TCP IP uh, infrastructure, we all believe that it's not secure by inherent, and also with the interconnects like operations technology, which are not as matured, as we have seen in the presentation this morning, that IOTs and OTs are not as matured as the IT infrastructure, the coupling between IT and OT uh, is, is, is very, very loose. So all this is what we are standing on. You know, if you look below, what is on that we are standing as a uh, ecosystem. Then if you look behind, who is supporting us? You know, we always say that law is the most important fundamental that supports every human being on the earth. And the treaties between the country, they save us from getting into the war or, 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 or nuclear proliferation. Similarly, if you look at the IT space, there is no such law that is so strong, and the, the, there is absolutely not a great treaty as what we see a Geneva treaty for you know, non-proliferation and so on and so forth. So that's, the, that's what we look behind. If you look across, we are handling with the users. And since morning, we have been seeing that users will definitely click. You know, there was an amazing video which Noam has shown where the user will click. You know, he will be forced uh, to, to, to do something that will lead to the subsequent action. And who are ahead of us are the hackers. They can collaborate fast. They have an asymmetric advantage of first move and so on and so forth. So that's when we look for, when we look ahead. And then we look above, you know, what is coming on. You know, it's like a balagan, we call it in Israeli language. You know, I worked for Checkpoint many years ago. So that's where we call it, is that something is coming from the top like an avalanche. So that's, that something is like nothing but a digital economy, you know, digital of everything. We're getting transformed from every day uh, to everything into IoT or equivalent of the ecosystem. So this is a five vector problem statement, which the IT engineers, security operations engineers, or the IT architects or security architects are dealing with. And we have a great magic in the form of the, the sciences, which are machine learning, deep learning, and reinforced learning, to solve and help human beings. Why? Because machines are much better at remembering what they've seen. Unlike the security operations center guy who might have seen on the day one of, of the, this month, you know, some kind of a IP scan, and the same IP is doing the attack now with the possibility of SQL injection. Also, machines are much faster to respond when they're able to pick up something. The response is fast than the human beings. Thirdly, machines can handle with the variety and veracity of the data. Veracity is the speed with which the data is getting built. Variety is the diversity which exists within the data. So they are able to figure out. You know, if you tell a machine that this is a cat, this is a mouse, this is a dog, this is the different forms of the cat, and if you show a third or a fourth picture after that, it will try to predict rightly as, you, as opposed to the human beings. So this is what exactly is, is, is the advantage. And lastly but not least, machines are always consistent in their response. They don't have emotions. They don't get tired at 4 a.m. as opposed to 11 p.m. when their job started at the airport uh, security, as an airport security officer, or they don't have the holidays and, you know, vacations to, to happen and celebrate. This is what exactly machines are used for, and, and machines are not going to replace human beings in cybersecurity. Let me tell you, that's not the message I'm trying to do. It, they're going to only amplify the actions which the human can take. How this, like, you know, like this, we all have established for many years that dogs enhance the this, the bomb squads, the cyber physical security squads, and they enable the humans to take the right action. But the action itself cannot be taken by a, hum, uh, by a, by a dog. So this is how the machines are going to play the role in the, in the life of uh, the cybersecurity analyst or cybersecurity professional. Let's talk about some use cases, what, what's happening. In the prevention space, you know, as uh, Demon has mentioned before my presentation, that there's going to be a talk on Checkpoint, how they are using artificial intelligence in their products, and prevention is the, is, the, is the DNA of checkpoints, so there is there's nothing much I have to explain. So many technologies which are in the anti-malware space, uh, finding out the malware, taking a decision whether it's a spam or not, whether it's a fraud or not, all this is being taken by, by with the help of, uh, you know, evolving machine learning models now. But if you move to the detection tools, you know, there are some detection tools which exist like network behavior analytics tools which are relying on the artificial intelligence models. They try to pick up the outliers, they try to pick up the anomalies, and they try to, to, to create a, a message out of that. Then comes the, the, 
the multi-log analysis. That's the problem we are dealing with. You know, we are not dealing with a single vendor solution in our data centers or in the evolved data centers which are embracing from cloud to, to IOTs to the, to the world of mobile and mobility, et cetera. We are dealing with the evolved data centers. So simple, regular expressions, the way we have built security operation centers in last 20 years are not going to suffice. We need to use the, the machines to, to, to handle uh, uh, this function so that they can reduce the time of detection when they are binging the data from multiple uh, log collecting points. Last but not the least, if the, if, if the machine has detected that yes, this is a problem, we should not be working like target, you know, when the machines were honking that there is something happening, but the action was not taken subsequent to what they were alerting for. So hence, we need to talk about something called as uh, the level one, level two, level three engineers to be facilitated who are monitoring 24 cross seven to enable them with the machine and uh, artificial intelligence models to enhance the time to respond to the attack. This is an empirical formula. This is a 20 years old formula which still holds true. You know, 20 years ago when I put a first security operation center project for my company, this is what we used to write. Time to detect an attack plus time to respond to an attack should always be less than or equal to the time for an attack to succeed. This is an empirical formula that if you are following in your organization or for your customers, if you're a partner of Checkpoint, you're always staying ahead of your uh, attack uh, economy. Now let's talk about how we have solved this problem. This are the left side is your telemetry of the devices which are putting the logs into your uh, the analyze engine, which is nothing but an SIEM. This SIEM can be any, any vendor solution. And I'm, in the next slide, I'm going to talk about the vendor solutions with which our solution right now is completely ready with, while we are willing to look at other solutions as well. So this engine has been enriched no matter the SIM is, it has to be enriched with the, 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 the deep learning model to generate IOAs and IOPs. IOAs and IOPs are the precursors to IOCs. We all understand IOC, that is indicator of compromise. But indicator of an attack and indicator of a pivot are the two different attributes which I'm introducing today to all of you, that these are the initial alert vectors which needs to be responded to. But if you respond to all and every IOAs and IOPs, what's gonna happen? A Lot of false positive. So you need to enrich these false positives likelihoods to figure out what exactly is an attack. And how you enrich the, 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 uh, these, these IOAs is by involving the third party hard, uh, harvesting engines who are giving you the feeds, who are giving you the intelligence which is happening around the world. So if the WannaCry kind of a pattern is picked up by let's say a threat emulation engine of checkpoint or a sandbox engine of checkpoint, it will be alerted in the SIM in some form. But that alert will not have a great confidence, but it'll have something. Now, if WannaCry is spreading, you know, uh, we heard in the morning uh, that it finished within seven days, so it must be spreading very fast. When it is spreading fast, obviously there is, the, there, there is something of the similar sort which is gonna happen in some part of the other world as well. And that's where the enrichment process helps. And once we have that enrichment, then comes the real action. With the enrichment, we have put in the, the, the deep learning and reinforced learning in R of the R engine, which is going to assign the score from one to 10 for every event which we are seeing. And when we are seeing the events, what we have built up in our learning model is that, that with our experience so far, with all the environments so far we have built the system for, there's a 92% of accuracy when the score is assigned by this machine above eight on the scale of 10. That means I have a likelihood to figure out that if the score is eight, go and take the action, don't depend on a human being. And that's what exactly is now the APIs and sticks and taxis of the world are helping us. These standards help us build this format for starting with checkpoint two years ago when it started to support sticks and taxi. And with RAT proliferation now, you can write directly into a firewall engine, you can write into a URL filtering blade, and with AT20 coming soon, you know, you will be able to write anti into an antivirus and, and antibot blade as well. Now, if the score is less than eight, what should we do with that? We should automate it with something called as the hunting platforms now. This exactly is the model, which we classify it as a managed incident response platform which we, or a solution which we have created. 
looking at the, the real use cases here, what we have done is we have applied the learning to identify IOAs from the SINs, which we are going to work or talk about in the next slide. Then we have applied the reinforced learning to identify the already known patterns, you know, how a SQL injection can maximum happen, possibly. How uh, a directory uh, traversal can happen, how an obfuscation can happen on the website. So all these very important use cases have been populated and have been coded into the machine so that the user doesn't, who's sitting on the dashboard does not need to establish that correlation. Then we have integrated the third party global feeds to enrich this learning model. And once the, the IOAs or IOPs are enriched to a IOC, when will we call them an IOC? When the score is above eight. On the, on, and it's a floating point value, you know, it's not just the integer values, we are using the floating point values. So eight and above will help us directly using the machine readable threat intelligence, that is MRTI, and right into checkpoint firewall rule to block a bad IP, right into a checkpoint URL filtering blade right now to block a bad URL if it is doing a domain generating algorithm, or go and write into a MD5 of Symantec right now, or any other checkpoint R80.20 implementations when we have future, future supporting the antivirus blade as well. So let's look quickly. So these are the three SIMs we are currently having this model ready with, which is, you know, you might be using any of them. So we pick up the risk score, we, uh, we, we define the risk score by the virtue of the, the, the deep learning model, and anybody who is an enthusiast, you know, I missed one slide. So that's a hardcore neural network slide which was there, so then uh, I saw so many audience, so I, I just skipped that slide. If anybody is wanting to have a deep dive discussion, you know, after this session, you please come and have, we can talk about that, how we are calculating these scores. So once the IOAs or IOPs are identified, then we are enriching it right now with three vendors, which is BlueLave, Malware Patrol, and Looking Glass. So these are the three uh, right now th uh, threat harvesting uh, engines. And we have identified these three after a research of almost one, one and a half years by finding out that yes, they are, when they give uh, 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 intelligence, it really has some meaning. It's not that they are just sending a noise to, to you. Doesn't mean that it'll work only with these three. Today, every uh, uh, intelligence harvesting vendor is giving you an API integration, and this is actually nothing but a API integration. So whatever we are seeing here, this is starting from here, is our platform, the QS platform which we have created. And once we enrich up to the score of eight and above, there is an automatic reconfiguration which we are currently supporting with Checkpoint NGTP, which is the, the blade uh, for firewall and URL filtering right now. Then we are supporting semantic antivirus suit, F5 WAF, force point, which is nothing but a WebSense, previously called as URL filtering solution from WebSet, and we are writing Cisco ACLs into the router. So this makes a, 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 a you know, OPSEC kind of an alliance model which will help you build the solutions. If your score is greater than five but less than eight, we have integrated a platform to go and search from IBM X-Force Cloud, which gives you a understanding about the vector, and also from the Alien Vault solution, which gives you, called as OTX pulses. So these are one of the, again, very, very strong platforms of the research on the, what's happening on the threat actors story across the globe. Lastly, we have also recently integrated Vectra, which is nothing but a hunting platform. And moving on, if the score is less than five, in currently platform, we are just putting it to the MIS report. So if you look at from here to here, some of the SIMs in the world, they are also embedding the artificial intelligence. So this can go up to that. So you may not need that functionality from QS engine, but this is also then can be a use case for you, which is called as a managed incident response. Quickly, this is how the configuration happens. On the day one, we put it with a checkpoint, semantic, websense, blue live, uh, fish labs, malware patrol. These are the different uh, vendors for intelligence. These are the vendors of security, which are supporting for the M MRTI. And when you see this, this is a dashboard of an incident response engineer who is seeing on the, on the uh, floor, what is happening to the infrastructure that he's protecting or responsible for. This gives him the, the risk score for the organization. This dashboard has something called as a, if you see, uh, automated block. You know, this is where if the risk score of QS rating is above some number we have put in for this lab ready, uh, it's, a, it's a real data, the IP address and all those things and it will tell that when did it take that action and reconfigure the checkpoint or any other solution for that matter. This is just a part of this, you know, I'm not sure if you are seeing this very clearly. This just shows, this is a behind the scene code. 
If you look, this is saying write directly into checkpoint uh, controller. You know, this is the code which is happening. If you see, this is saying write directly into the checkpoint URL filtering controller. And how it happens in, this is a rat.x dashboard. If you see, this is saying compromise IP list both ways, you know, uh, from uh, this to any and so on and so forth. So this is actually automatically getting written in this rule if it's a bad IP. And if you look at, it's not just the bad IPs. We are talking about the CNCs. We are talking about the URLs and the MD5 hashes. And in the current situation, when it comes to checkpoint and GTP, you are able to reconfigure firewall blade, you are able to reconfigure the URL filtering blade. Last but not the least, uh, I heard Avi saying in the morning, and uh, when I was in Vegas, I saw Gil talking about the, the mega trends, which is the generation six, which are gonna be in or pushed into. And if we see the risk matrix that I've shown you on the spider curve, that is what is coming like a balagan or an avalanche from top, is the digital economy, and when we are talking about that, we will be living in the world of IoT sensors. E each and every aspect of physical world will get collaborated. Now, it's very difficult when, it, when we are dealing with such a complex protocol space to get a IT level visibility on the kind of model I've shown you. So therein, to one of the customers who is one of the very large manufacturing organization in our country, we have demonstrated that we can bring the SSL tap and let checkpoint be used as a sentry because it understands the protocols on OT and as well as IoT. This is right now not have a live customer, but we are already planning to do a POC with one of the customers, and that can do an amazing job. So even if you have uh, a different security controls, but you are embracing IoT, you might be from a high healthcare and, and so on and so forth, this can actually be a real way to expand your telemetry, which you are not able to pick up otherwise in your traditional SIMs or syslog errors. This completes my presentation, and uh, you can connect me for uh, anything, any question on my LinkedIn or on uh, send me an email uh, anytime. Thank you very much.